Men, yes, you have a menopause too. Men don't have the sudden hormonal crash women get in menopause, but we do experience a steady testosterone decline starting around age 30. And the biggest cause isn't age, it's metabolism. Testosterone is made inside your mitochondria. When they weaken, testosterone drops. Insulin resistance makes this worse by blocking the enzymes your testes need to produce it. And extra body fat? It converts testosterone into estrogen, which drives even more fat gain, a vicious cycle. The good news, you can influence this by losing excess fat, improving insulin sensitivity, lifting weights, sleeping well, managing stress, and keeping alcohol in check. If you're concerned about testosterone, get tested. But remember, most of this decline is metabolic, which means you can change it. This is lecture 129 of the Metabolic Classroom. Looking to improve your own metabolic health? Visit InsulinIQ.com for courses, coaching, consultations, and a 10-day free community membership trial. To dive deep into the science behind metabolic health, become an insider at BenBickman.com, where you'll enjoy my exclusive content, ad-free podcasts, live stream Q&A access, and more. The word menopause literally refers to the cessation of menstruation, which obviously does not apply to men. But here's why I still find the term useful, if perhaps still a little confusing. It helps us understand that men experience their own version of hormonal decline with age, just as women do. It's the male equivalent of menopause, not the same thing and not equal in degree, but a parallel process that does deserve some attention just for the sake of the men who are wanting to understand their health a little better. To really appreciate what's happening in men, let's briefly review what happens in women during menopause. This comparison will illuminate why the male experience is fundamentally different, but equal in its own way. In women, menopause represents something truly remarkable from a biological standpoint, the complete exhaustion of a finite resource. Here's what I mean. When a female baby is developing in the womb, her ovaries already contain all the eggs she will ever have, somewhere between one to two million primordial follicles. By the time she reaches puberty, that number has already declined to about 300,000. This isn't because something went wrong, it's simply how the system is designed. The follicles are continuously being activated and lost through a process called atresia, or just a programmed death of the follicle. The rate of follicle loss accelerates dramatically as women age. Before age 37, women lose approximately 5% of their remaining follicles each year. But after 37, that rate more than doubles to about 12% annually. This acceleration continues until typically in the late 40s or early 50s, the ovaries are essentially depleted of follicles. When this happens, estrogen production plummets by roughly 90% because the follicles themselves are the primary source of estrogen in premenopausal women. This dramatic hormonal cliff is why menopause symptoms can be so sudden and, pro and pronounced. These are dramatic manifestations, things like hot flashes, mood changes, sleep disturbances, and more. The body is experiencing a rapid hormonal withdrawal. The male experience is quite different in origin and magnitude, unlike ovaries, which have a finite supply of follicles. And remember, the follicle is so relevant because it's the source of all of these hormones. Men's Leydig cells, that's the cells within the testes that are responsible for producing testosterone, actually persist throughout life. It's not a finite resource. Men don't run out of testosterone producing cells. Instead, these cells gradually become less capable at their job. Think of it this way. If female menopause is like a warehouse running out of inventory, male menopause is like a factory that keeps running but slowly produces less and less of the product each year. The machinery is still there, but it's not working as well as it once did. This gradual decline typically begins around age 30 to 40 with testosterone levels dropping approximately 1% per year. But here's what makes this 
particularly significant. Free testosterone, the biologically active form that's not bound to proteins in the blood, which inactivates it, it declines even faster at about one and a half to two percent per year. This is partly because levels of sex hormone binding globulin, sometimes just abbreviated as SHBG, tend to increase with age, grabbing more of that testosterone and, or making it, and make it unavailable for use. So we have this compounding effect, a reduction in testosterone production. At the same time, we have an increase in testosterone binding. So the sex hormone binding protein is locking up more of the testosterone and thus the free amount, which is again, as I noted, the biologically active form is greatly reduced relatively. There's a landmark study called the Massachusetts male aging study, and they found that total testosterone declined at 1.6% per year, while bioavailable or the free testosterone dropped at two to three per, uh, percent per year. Similarly, the Baltimore longitudinal study of aging confirmed consistent testosterone decline across every decade from the 30s through the 80s. The clinical implications are substantial. By their 60s, approximately 20% of men have clinically low testosterone. By the 70s and 80s, that number rises to about 50%. Yet because this decline happens so gradually, unlike the more abrupt transition that women experience, many men don't realize what's happening until the effects have accumulated significantly.